If you've ever heard this sound, or this, you're not gonna wanna miss this video. Today we're gonna be diving into brake performance, how to maximize the power and consistency out of your brakes, and how to keep them running better longer. Welcome back for another episode of our Back to Basics series, guys. Before we get into all the awesome information we've got, I've got a quick favor to ask. Hit the subscribe button for us, guys. It would mean a lot. We are really trying to hit that 50,000 subscriber mark, and uh, we've been looking at our analytics, and let's see, it's about 80% of you guys that are watching these videos don't subscribe to our channel, so please, we ask, it would be awesome. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We did a lot of research when it came to this video, more than the 25 years of hard lessons and bad experiences I've had. In fact, we talked with a World Cup downhill racer, we talked with a biochemist that works for TRP now, and their lead engineer and lead World Cup race mechanic. So when it comes to brakes, there are a few key things that we're gonna talk about. Um, moving parts, braking surfaces, and fluids. First up, we'll, we'll glance over brake rotors. So there's a lot of different cuts and um, styles and designs on brake rotors. People don't really get too involved in that. They're more often discussing brake rotor diameters. There's not a huge difference when it comes to heat management on say a 203 to a 223 or a 160 to a 180. But if you go from 160 to 223, you will definitely see some difference in heat management, uh, brake fade performance, et cetera. Um, obviously there's a weight penalty. We're always gonna take that weight penalty because we would rather have a larger brake rotor that's gonna handle the abuse of our sustained descents, heavier e-bikes, and uh, just generally downhill bias riding. What is gonna be a factor is the brake rotor thickness. So um, you're gonna find TRP brakes on a lot of our personal bikes, um, you know, once we get past testing them in their stock configuration uh, because we love the power and the consistency and reliability of these things. And I think one of the big reasons for that is that TRP uses 2.3 millimeter thick rotors where a lot of brands are like 1.8 or under 2 millimeter thick. Now if you imagine heat management, uh, these are going to be less likely to warp when they get hot and you're on the brakes really hard, uh, less likely to bent, get damaged, um, and, and just they're going to manage the heat better. So brake pad material, uh, depending on if you're running SRAM, Shimano, TRP, Magura, there's um, usually going to be two or three options for brake pad material. Um, as you can see, they will usually be color coded. Um, that'll be a good way for you to kind of tell the difference. Um, you know, there's metallic, there's a semi-metallic uh, from a lot of brands, or you've got a resin or organic option. We talked with uh, World Cup downhiller Nico Mullally, who is a, a TRP athlete, and uh, he prefers resin because he likes the softer, the more delicate lever feel he gets of the pads as they contact onto that rotor. Um, another thing with resin pads is that when they are up to temperature and uh, you know at that optimal operating temp, they offer great initial bite. Your, your scrubbing of speed right off the top is gonna be best with a resin compound. Um, the drawback to resin pads is that they uh, are more susceptible to fade when they get really hot. They do not work as well in the wet and do not last as long. So going to the opposite end of the spectrum, if you've got a metallic pad, a uh, centered metal pad, they are going to be a little bit louder, be a little bit noisier. However, they will resist heat fade a lot better and they last a lot longer. You've got your pads picked out, you've got your brake rotors selected. Now we're gonna talk about those two surfaces and how they work together. TRP said that they have an alarming number of customers reach out to them who have used WD-40 on their brakes. That is a big, big no-no. If you go out and ride away and start grabbing that brake, it's just gonna spread throughout the brake rotor. You're gonna 
bake in and you are going to um, be in for a world of hurt in more than one way possibly. Friction is your friend. So you're gonna wanna have a clean, quality breaking surface that's bed in properly. Again, that's very important. How paranoid should you be when it comes to contaminating your brake pads and rotors? We would say be very cautious. Uh, Colin Escabel, who is the, the lead engineer and World Cup mechanic for TRP, goes so far as to say he doesn't even touch the brake rotors with his bare hands. Be careful when you wash your bike, when you lube your bike, don't use any aerosols on there. If you use spray on sunscreen and you're standing over your bike leaning against the car, that is gonna fall down, get onto the rotors, and then get baked. Now you can resurface your brake pads and your brake rotors, However, if there is oil or contamination like that, they're, they're done. You gotta throw them away because as you can see, the way that oil spreads out, it also spreads in. So no amount of sanding or resurfacing will get rid of that. It's just gonna be creeping in there and it's always going to be touching your brake rotors and making them squeal, howl, and not perform as well. Another thing to consider is your driving situation. Driving over snow, slush, de-icer. Rough day out there. Rough day. <laughs> Even dry dust if you're going down dirt roads to get to the trail. All that stuff is just flying up and it's landing on your rotors and your pads and as soon as you start that first downhill, it's just gonna get baked in there. Something that you might wanna consider is covering the brakes for transportation, especially in really inclement weather, if you're going on a really long road trip. Isopropyl alcohol is your best friend when it comes to cleaning and maintaining your brake performance. It dries great, it leaves no film or residue, it is safe on little rubber O-rings, gaskets, the rest of the bike. If you got the spray bottle, you can spray it kind of right into the brake caliper and get on the pads. Highly suggest doing that as a way to prevent contamination, dirt, gunk, and debris from getting onto your brakes. So a really cool trick that we learned from talking with Colin at TRP is drywall sandpaper. Um, for the longest time, we'd been using just a regular, you know, medium grit sandpaper to resurface our brake pads, and it's something that has worked for the years and done fine. But drywall sandpaper has holes and it's pretty thick, so. What you can do with that actually is sand your brake pads and the, the fall off material won't just kind of be getting it rubbed in and take longer. You're gonna draw a figure eight on that sandpaper and you're just gonna keep doing that. I would recommend doing it on a flat surface, not a shirt, but we're just doing this for the dramatic effect. Now that is what's coming off your brake pads. Now, if you think about it like this, this is what you're pushing into your brake rotors too. When they get hot and they start working together, that is all the stuff that's going on your rotor. That's why your rotors are black. You can see already the difference. Um, I'm gonna do the rest of the sanding here on a flat surface as that's gonna work a lot better. And you're gonna wanna keep doing that figure eight motion, slightly move it to different areas so you can get fresh paper and You've got a uniform brake surface. This is what the old pads look like, and that is what the clean pads look like. That is quite a difference. That is gonna make uh, a dramatic difference in feel once we're out on the trails. After that, you're obviously gonna want to address the other part of the component here, and that is your brake rotors. Now, something to think about when you're doing this is you're just wiping, cleaning, kind of regular maintenance after every few rides or a long road trip, whatever. This just came off a bike. You can see, I mean, these are dried bugs. This thing has been on the back of a car for a long trip after coming back from the trail. So before we do like the full resurfacing, I'm just gonna show you what, just some rubbing alcohol and a little wipe will get off of here. Not terribly bad, pretty dark still, little, little gross. You got some stuff on there that combined with those pads, you're not gonna wanna be pushing in 
to this brake surface. So that's something we recommend doing pretty regularly. Obviously first you wanna check, make sure all your rotor bolts are tight, make sure your caliper bolts are tight. If they are all tight and secure, then the next thing you're gonna look at is this resurfacing, some steel wool, isopropyl alcohol, and your rotor. That's it, get to work. Uh, you can spray some directly on here if you like. It's gonna be a little mess here. After that, just gonna get in here with the rotor and do a little bit of scrubbing and wiping. Basically what you're trying to do is uh, same thing we did to the pads, which is remove any little bit of debris, all the dirt, grime, all the brake pad material that's been pushed in here. Just trying to get that stuff off there, give you a nice shiny new braking surface again. And just wipe some of this stuff off here. And basically what you're gonna be aiming for is a kind of a dirty mirrored finish. Obviously it's, it's not a new rotor, so it probably won't look like one until you really get down there. But as you can see, we're pulling a lot of crap off of this thing. And uh, we're just gonna probably give it one more go here and see if we can't get this just a little bit cleaner. Total overkill mode. Okay, this is apparently what Colin does in the World Cup pits. Take a little torch and he'll put this over here and just kind of burn off any residue, any last little bit of steel wool. You're not gonna have to bake this. You don't have to go crazy, but he said he just likes to do this. That way, as soon as that athlete goes to grab those brakes for the first time, there's not gonna be any, any residue, any films, nothing left over, and that thing is going to be good to go. Once you get everything dry, clean, you've got your resurfaced brake rotors or your new brake pad compound, put this in, go pedal around, um, bed those brakes in. We, we made a video, we'll link it down below, but um, really easy process, only takes three to five minutes, just drag the brakes, do some sprints to a, a slow down, not a complete stop, but hard brake sprints and uh, then you'll have resurfaced brake pad and rotors all set to go, greatly gonna restore the performance of your brakes, um, hopefully reduce any vibration um, or inconsistencies that you might have. All right, folks, so that is about it. Um, here's what I'm hoping you took away from this video. Brake pad materials. If you want a really aggressive, quick bite with a soft, supple lever feel, resin brake pads are gonna be a great option. If you are someone who's on the brakes a lot, has a long sustained descent, you have issues with brake fade, maybe halfway through your downhills, you're noticing that you're having to grab really hard. It's not slowing down as you would like it to. You might have resin pads that were specced in your bike and you might wanna make a switch to a metallic pad, which is going to perform better in the wet. It is going to give you longer performance. It's gonna be less likely to fade. However, it will be a little bit noisier. Or you could try a blend brake pad, a semi-metallic um, or something along those lines to kind of give you the best of both worlds. Uh, next up, brake fluid. We didn't really touch too much on that. 10 days at Whistler, for example. You're probably gonna wanna resurface your rotor and pads at the least and probably do a brake bleed. That stuff's getting black after boiling and getting super hot, cooling down, getting hot again. You're gonna wanna flush that out, make sure it, um, you know, isn't impregnated with air, isn't too black and sooty and silty. Quick and easy to do, it's definitely worth doing once in a while. Contamination, that was the big lesson today, folks. Do not contaminate your brakes. Chain lube, sunscreen spray, finger oils, you name it, just be very careful. Isopropyl alcohol is your best friend. You're gonna definitely wanna invest in some of that if you don't have it already. Start wiping down your brakes more often you're gonna really be able to maximize the performance out of your brakes longer, they're gonna work better, and you're gonna have less likelihood of putting crap into that rotor bed and into your pad material. So thank you guys very much for watching. We appreciate it. Once again, hit the subscribe button, please. We're trying to get to our 50,000 subscriber goal. So ask any questions down below. We will do our best to get back to every single one of you guys. If not, we will ask TRP to chime in with anything that's above our heads. So thanks for watching and we hope to see you out on the trails.